Hey guys, what's going on? It's Subba Mijora Boy and welcome back to another video. So a few weeks ago, I had put out a video on the newly released Hyrule Warriors game called Age of Calamity. And you guys seem to have loved that video's thumbnail a lot, which makes me really happy because it took a lot of time and brainstorming for that thumbnail. Now in today's video, I'll be telling you guys how I made this thumbnail using Affinity Photo on the iPad Pro. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro and let's get right into it. As you can see, I have opened a brand new project here in Affinity Photo, and I have my photo imported in here. Now, what I'm going to do is duplicate this photo before I start touching it up. To duplicate an image, just hold down on the photo until these options pop up. As you can see, an option to duplicate the image does come up. So go ahead and tap on that, and as you can see, our image is duplicated right here. Now I want to add my custom Hyrule Warrior tapestry onto the screen in such a way that it looks natural and looks like a part of the screen. So we are going to use the perspective tool for that. Now to do that, I'm going to select the duplicated photo layer, and after that, I'm going to add the perspective tool. To add the perspective tool, go and tap on these three dots right here. Once you do that, you will be greeted to a whole variety of options. Around the bottom, you will find a section termed as projection. Tap on that, and you will have three options in there. Tap on the perspective projection option. When you do that, a perspective grid will come up. Now, what I'm going to do is map this grid with the screen of our switch. So let's do just that. As you can see, once I'm done with it, the grid perfectly lines up with our screen. Now, what you want to do is go and tap on the view option right here, which is this hand symbol. When you do that, you can see that our photo gets zoomed in, and this is completely normal. So don't worry. Once this is done, I'm going to import my custom tapestry by tapping on the three dots again and selecting on place, and then selecting on place from photos. Once the photo gets imported, I'm just going to scale it to my liking. Now that I'm done scaling it, I'm going to merge the tapestry and the duplicated layer. To do that, I'm going to be going on the symbol, tapping on it once and then tap on merge down. Now that is done, go back to the three dots, go down to projection tool, tap on it and go to the option called cancel projection. And boom, we have the tapestry perfectly on the screen in a manner that looks natural and looks like a part of the photo. Now I could have left it just at that and added a few adjustments here and there, but I wanted this thumbnail to have a very Breath of the Wild aesthetic to it. So I thought why not portray this thumbnail in a way that it looks like the switch is in Hyrule Fields while the calamity is taking place. So to achieve that, I had to make the grass and the overall environment reddish. Now to accomplish that, the first thing I did was to select the switch out from the duplicated layer and I did that by using the selection tool. To equip the selection tool, you have to go and tap on this icon right here. Once you do that, go and select the smart selection brush tool. Once equipped, start drawing around and inside the switch until you have the entire switch selected. So, let me go ahead and just do that. Once you are done selecting and are happy with your selection, go and tap on the refine option. Once there, you can do a few minor adjustments to your selected object. Once you are done with that, go on output and keep tapping on the little arrow over there until you get an option for new layer with mask. Once you get that option, tap on apply. Now at first you won't notice anything, and that's due to the background of the original photo still being there, while the duplicated image's background is removed. Now, as you saw on the thumbnail, the grass was reddish in color, and to achieve that, we are going to create a fresh pixel layer. Just go on your layers option and then tap on the plus icon. Once you do that, you will get an option to add a pixel layer. So now we have a new pixel layer with us, and what I'm going to do now is make my paintbrush size to 1000, and I'm going to add in the dark red color using the RGB sliders. So my red slider is going to be on 212. 
my green slider is going to be 32 and my blue slider is going to be 23. Now that the color is set, paint the entire pixel layer in this color. Now the only thing you can see is the colored pixel layer but things are gonna get interesting very soon. What I'm gonna do now is take this layer underneath the selected switch layer and as you can see the switch is visible but the background isn't. All you can see is the red layer. Now to make the grass red go to your layers make sure the red layer is selected and then go and tap on these three dots over here. Once you tap on that you will get a few layer options. The first thing I'm going to do is set the layer opacity to 85%. After that, I'm going to tap on this blend option over here. And as you can see, after I tap on it, I'm greeted to a lot of different options. Now I'm going to select the multiply option. And as you can see, now the grass is visible in that reddish color. Now we are going to duplicate that reddish layer and put it above our switch so that the switch also gets that reddish color. The only thing I'm going to change for this layer is the opacity which I'll be taking from 85% to 60% and 70% of our thumbnail is done right here. The last two things that remain are the fire cinders and the slight adjustments. So let's start with the cinders. So I have a cinder image right here with a black background and I'm going to import it in. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to set its opacity at 80% and its blend mode to screen so that we can get rid of the black background. Now I'm just going to scale this appropriately and then get rid of the excess cinders using the brush tool. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to duplicate this layer and place it on the other side as I feel that the other side looks a bit empty. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's add in our adjustments like the brightness, contrast, white balance and etc. To access the adjustments, just tap on this icon over here and you will be greeted to all of the different options. Let's start off with the brightness. So the image looks a bit dark right now, so let's lighten it up a bit. Let's set the brightness to 50% and the contrast to 30%. And man, this already looks so much better. Now let's set the curves. So you guys can see my curve right here. I have a four point curve and the photo looks much better now. Let's also set the exposure a bit high. Not too high, otherwise our image will look too blown out. Now let's set our shadows and highlights. Now I want the image to pop more, so I'm going to reduce the shadows to minus 28% and I'm going to increase the highlights by 15%. Coming to saturation and vibrance, I prefer reducing the saturation and increasing the vibrance on my photos. And I'm going to be doing the same for this one as well. So I'm going to set my saturation at minus 10% and my vibrance to 30%. And the last adjustment is the white balance. So I'm going to keep the balance at 30% and the tint at minus 15%. And that's about it. Our thumbnail is ready to export. To export your thumbnail, tap on this icon right here and select the export option. When you do that, you will be greeted with your export settings. You can either save it to your files or tap on the share option and then save the image to your camera roll. Well, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about Affinity Photo. If you have any doubts, feel free to comment them down in the comment section below or hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Links to my Twitter and Instagram handles will be down in the description below. If you guys liked the video, then please leave a big fat thumbs up on it. But if you loved it, then please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one. And as always, this is your boy Majora Boy signing off for today and I hope you guys have an amazing new year and I'll see you guys in 2021.